My name is Jason Buffington. I'm the Senior Analyst at ESG covering data protection. Follow me on Twitter as JBuff. As we start a new year, I'd like to offer some ideas of what you should be looking for as you consider modernizing your data protection strategy and mechanisms. First and foremost, something that protects physical plus VMware plus Hyper-V. In recent ESG data, we see that while VMware certainly maintains predominant mind share and market share, virtualization is not a one horse race anymore. Nearly half of all environments have Hyper-V somewhere in their infrastructure, and many of those have it as their primary hypervisor. In fact, less than a third of environments have a single hypervisor at all. So if your backup solution does not offer a parity of protection capabilities for both VMware and Hyper-V, you could find yourself in the same dated quandary that folks from the last decade had when their solution only protected physical machines and not VMs. You should also be planning for backups plus snapshots plus replication. Data protection is more than backup. Check out an earlier blog post I did on what I call the data protection spectrum that talks about backups and replication, snapshots, archive, etc. When we asked highly virtualized IT pros what they were doing to protect their VMs, above and beyond VM backups, they had a wide range of responses. But take a look at the bottom of this graph. Less than 10% of environments are only protecting their VMs with VM-based backups. Everybody else is doing something more. Not that VM backups aren't a critical part of your data protection strategy, but the reality is that 9 out of 10 of you are likely snapping the VMs or the volumes or you're replicating them or you're doing something else in addition. Let's talk about deduplication and how you want to get that as close to the production workloads as possible. In 2012, we looked at one of the big IT spins, storage, to see what they were using that storage for. And by a wide margin, the number one usage of newly purchased storage was in support of data protection. In fact, number three was data replication. So if you could store your protected data smarter, you could significantly reduce your storage, CapEx and OpEx spending. Now put that together, and we really want to get the deduplication discernment, figuring out to dedupe or not, as close to the production workload as possible. You know, it used to be enough to simply dedupe to smarter disk, but that's not enough anymore. Because otherwise, what happens is the production server sends all of its changes to the backup server, and after the indexing, it sends all those changes to the dedupe storage, and then the dedupe array discards most of it because it already had it from an earlier backup. At a minimum, besides you need to be deduplicating, let the backup server do some of the dedupe within its software or by intelligently communicating with the storage array so that stuff doesn't get sent from the backup server only to be discarded by the array. But the ideal model is to have the backup agents or proxies also be intelligently communicating with the storage array directly so that they can immediately discard what the storage array already has. We should also be looking for better dashboards and wizards predominantly because of a broader stakeholder usage. When we asked highly virtualized environments about their data protection challenges, five of the top six challenges were around visibility. Virtualization is awesome for provisioning, for management, et cetera, but all of that abstraction of running on this cluster or that host or this storage makes troubleshooting or just plain validating data protection really tough. So better dashboarding instrumentation should help us understand the effectiveness of the data protection that we already have, and that's hugely important. And because the DBA and the vert admin and line of business owner, and they all depend on their data, they want to know how the backups are doing. So look for data protection solutions and maybe even third-party monitors that allow a range of stakeholders to understand how the backups are doing and maybe even invoke their own restores. You should also plan to solve for both CapEx and OpEx as well as agility to restore. Once upon a time, some folks used to reduce their CapEx, hardware and software, with OpEx, services, even if it was a wash in dollars because the CFO just wanted a different budget structure. Those days are long over, and reducing costs means reducing overall costs, and that trumps just about any other IT motivation. When asked about what factors were most likely to drive replacement of current backup solutions, economics top the list with volume of data forcing new approach and licensing models being the primary culprits. And behind that, there were a band of reasons that basically equated down to performance. Then there was what I call a catalyst event, like a new CIO who wants to change just because of something they're more familiar with. And then there's the everything else, which I think is funny because for those of us who've been selling backup for 20 years, 
we used to make a living based on those technical everything else things, device support and feature X and relationship or whatever. It turns out none of those are as important as economics or performance agility. Appliances. There are lots of reasons to utilize implementation and architecture services, expertise, if you will. But buying generic metal, installing an OS on it, and then running setup.exe for the backup server software isn't one of them. You could roll your own backup servers, but why? For me, I prefer appliances, pre-configured, either a virtualized appliance or a physical. Let's use those services dollars and efforts for configuration, for troubleshooting, not just running setup.exe. Plan for a hybrid architecture and use each medium for what it's best at. Each medium has its own merits and its own drawbacks. For recovery of data, you would be hard-pressed to convince me that disk isn't always the best medium, period. Granular recovery, deduplication, rapid ingest, restore, list goes on. But disk isn't perfect as a complete solution by itself. As much as I love disk for recoveries, it is extremely hard to store data for 7, for 10, for 15 years economically without tape. And certainly if distance is part of your needs, then cloud services may have a potential play. If you take off your biased lens and stop saying tape is dead or cloud is perfect, then my guess is that you will discover that your environment is best served in a hybrid architecture of mechanisms and media. Let's wrap this up. Build your plan based on your recovery goals, not on your protection capabilities. Way too often, people build their data protection strategy based on the capabilities that they already own, instead of assessing how the business needs to recover and then defining a data protection strategy that enables that. It doesn't mean that you have to accomplish the whole data protection strategy in one deployment or even maybe within one fiscal year, but figure out what or how the business needs to recover and then make that the plan. Then assess what your current products can do and start filling in the holes through adding or replacing technologies. And remember, data protection is more than backup, so your strategy will likely also include snapshots, replication, availability technologies, etc. And lastly, I cannot say this enough, test what you built. Nothing that I've suggested so far today counts if you don't test it. And not just when you're evaluating the components or when you initially deploy, but you have to routinely test. Otherwise, and I guarantee this, if you don't test, then you won't discover what you lack in assumed abilities to recover until you really need them and you can't actually restore your own data. As often as IT folks whine about 15 minutes here or an hour there for a series of tests, I guarantee that all of those test times combined are nothing, nothing compared to losing data, the time or effort to re recreate the data, even if it's possible at all. I hope this was helpful. I'm Jason Buffington with ESG. Thanks for watching.